Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be making a compound known as copper 2 chloride. And uh, copper 2 chloride is a beautiful green color, uh, greenish blue color, and we are going to be using it as one of our transition metal salts in a experiment known as the chemical garden. And uh, there will be quite a few videos on how to make various um, transition metal salts for this use. And one of them will be copper chloride. And it can be synthesized fairly easily from household hydrogen peroxide, some hydrochloric acid, which I do not have out right now, and copper metal. There's several different ways to produce copper chloride, of course, copper 2 chloride, of course. However, this is the easiest one for me. So, this is just 3% hydrogen peroxide. However, 30% would be much more useful. Sorry, my camera battery just died, but um, now it's charged. So uh, as I was saying, 3% uh, is much more useful just because concentrated hydrogen peroxide is a lot ex more expensive and we wouldn't want to waste it on an application where we could use just 3% hydrogen peroxide. So this is just bought at the pharmacy and the hydrochloric uh, acid was bought from um, Canadian Tire. So what we first need to do is get a varying amount of copper metal, however much you want, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll pr probably be using half of this fairly long uh, copper foil strip and we'll just plop it in there. Next, we'll cover it halfway with hydro hydrogen peroxide and halfway with hydrochloric acid. Now, hydrochloric acid by itself is not strong enough to actually um, uh, dissolve the copper metal and form copper chloride, but with the hydrogen peroxide, uh, the hydrogen peroxide helps to oxidize the copper metal, um, and then it can react with the hydrochloric acid to form the copper two chloride. Um, anyhow, so I'll go ahead, meet you outside when I measured out both ingredients, well, all three ingredients, and put them in this nice big jar. Okay, so you can see it's about half full with hydrogen peroxide, and we are now outside. Um, so, we just take some hydrochloric acid, which is sold as this muriatic acid, and I bought it at um, Canadian Tire. And we'll fill it the uh, other halfway, so it's just covering all of our copper metal, um, so that uh, it can react. Now this should be a sufficient amount to um, fully dissolve all of this copper, and we are using extreme excess um, so that we make sure that everything reacts. You can always add more copper metal if you would like to create more copper chloride. Um, anyhow, so the reaction that is now happening, you can see the beautiful green color of copper chloride slowly being produced. This reaction should be done in about a day. So uh, we have our hydrogen peroxide, which reacts with two hydrochloric chloride molecules, which is the hydrochloric acid, and copper metal to form copper chloride and two waters. Now, I just broke this down to show exactly where the chemicals are coming from. Uh, you can see there and from there is where the two waters come from. Um, anyhow, so that's basically the reaction that's happening. And you can see the nice beautiful green color. If I bring this up, yeah, definitely very green as our copper is now being dissolved. Now, of course, there's several different ways to do this, but this is, for me, the simplest. Anyhow, so we'll let those sit for a day and wait till all this copper metal has been dissolved. When it's all been dissolved, we should be left with a fairly clear green solution. Um, so I'll meet you back when that's been done. I just wanted to quickly note how much this reaction is actually ramped up. You can see you can actually see through the top, but not the bottom. This is because our solution is extremely concentrated at the bottom and it's all sinking to the bottom. This is rather interesting. Uh, it's not showing very well on camera, but there's a vigorous amount of bubbles being formed. Maybe a look from above would uh, be better. The camera's really blurry for some reason. Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess it's kind of hard to see. It's very clear though that a uh, fair amount of bubbles are being produced, which means that a reaction is proceeding fairly quickly. So I'll just swirl this around to get the mixture everywhere and continue to let this sit, and we'll just keep forming more iron chloride. Okay, so it's the next day, and you can see we're left with this nice green solution that's clear. And this means that all of the copper uh, has been dissolved, forming copper 2 chloride, which is now in solution. But we want this as a solid for the reaction. So we're going to pour it into a beaker and boil it down. So just transfer all of our solution to this beaker. And now we must go ahead and put this on a hot plate outside and boil off all of this liquid until we're left with a nice clear, or not clear, but nice green solid chunk. And uh, that will be our pure copper 2 chloride. So I'll stick this on my hot plate outside and boil it all the way down to complete dryness. Okay, so I boiled everything down and I stopped at this point where it's mostly brown with some green in it. And the green stuff is actually copper 2 chloride hydrate. 
And then the um, brown stuff is just copper 2 chloride and hydrate, so it's anhydrous, which means there's no water. Um, because it comes in a couple different uh, hydrates. Um, anyhow, so upon heating, it will de uh, decompose um, into the no um, anhydrous form, but um, by upon leaving it in to the out in the air, it will reabsorb water and form a nice green copper 2 chloride again, which is what we want for the chemical garden reaction because... Um, because the beautiful green color will create the effect that we want. We don't want some sort of brown thing. Um, anyhow, so basically, uh, what we can now do is just add a bit of water to this until we get a bit of a slurry so we can break everything up and rehydrate all of that um, anhydrous copper 2 chloride. Then we can um, re-dry it out um, by letting it evaporate and we'll be left with some nice green copper 2 chloride. Perfect for the reaction. So I'll we'll add probably 25 to 50 milliliters of water or so to rehydrate everything and meet you back. Okay, so I took all that and dissolved it in just a little bit of water in a smaller beaker. And what I'll do with this is take it, put it in the oven at really low heat, and just evaporate off the water so we can get nice crystal crystals of the hydrated form of copper chloride, which will then form. And this is what we will end up using for most of our reactions um, for the chemical garden. However, first I'd like to do just a bit of chemistry of copper chloride, which is rather interesting. So you can see it's brown in this from what I didn't scrape off, but if we add a bunch of water, it does form nice blue aqueous solutions. Um, so you can see that's nice and blue there. And these are dilute solutions. More concentrated solutions are very green, and this one appears to be black because it's really, really concentrated. But even weak solutions of uh, copper 2 chloride form beautiful blue colors. Now, um, upon taking a uh, way more reactive metal, such as aluminum or steel or something, which is why you never st uh, stir this with a steel object, um, it will actually start reacting to form copper metal. So, that reaction will proceed quite a bit slower, and uh, this solution is so dilute, I don't know if it'll even work. However, with the very concentrated solution, a very interesting reaction occurs. So, um, I just have a wooden chopstick here as uh, my stir rod, and if we put put a bit on here, we should see a vigorous. You can see there's a very vigorous reaction with which happens. This is a simple displacement reaction, where the uh, copper chloride reacts with the aluminum foil to produce copper metal and aluminum chloride. And the concentrated solution it has a lot of heat, as you can clearly see. So uh, we're forming large amounts of copper metal now on this uh, aluminum foil. You can see the reaction is very, very vigorous. That's one of my favorite reactions to do with this. Um, besides that, there's not much else you can do. So uh, that's basically how to make copper 2 chloride. Um, so I'll just meet you back as soon as I boil this down in the oven to show you the crystals that we've had. Make sure not to turn up the heat too high so that we don't decompose it to the anhydrous form because uh, we really want the hydrated form for the chemical garden reaction. So I'll meet you back. Okay, so here's our final copper 2 chloride, and um, I just threw it in with the rest of the copper 2 chloride that I do have. And um, as you can see, if I open this up, there are actually some rather nice large chunks in there. It's kind of hard to see. But um, basically, yeah, we're going to be using this for the chemical garden experiment, and possibly some other experiments in the future, uh, as copper chloride is a fairly useful um, chemical. Uh, it can also be used as an etchant, apparently, for... P um, printed circuit boards, I believe, um, but I'm not very interested in that. Um, anyhow, so that's basically um, how to make copper 2 chloride, and uh, in a future video we will be using this in the chemical garden, which will be very, very cool. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Wait, bye.